Hey everyone, my name is Jose, also known as Joe Engineer, and today we will be covering the removal, refurbishment, and reinstallation of my starter motor and solenoid on my 1983 911SC. This procedure should be applicable from uh, for air-cooled 911s from 1972 to 1986, I was used this exact same uh, starter. And the 72 to 83 workshop manual states that the earlier starters um, are of basically the same design. And I have a feeling the G50 um, gearbox equipped 911s from 1987 and later probably have a starter of a very similar design. So I think no matter what year of air-cooled 911 that you have, you'll still be able to gain some value from watching this video. So if you're having starter issues, it's making weird noises or acting kind of funky or sometimes doesn't work, then follow along and hopefully you can revive yours. First step here is to go ahead and get the rear end of the car up in the air. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just use a couple of jack stands. And I know I really should get an electric impact gun, but for some reason a socket and breaker bar just doesn't bother me that much so that's what I usually end up using. To lift the car I'm going to go ahead and use the factory jacking point on the side of the car. Uh, since this lifts the entire uh, side of the car I put wheel chocks on the opposite side of both tires so that the car cannot roll either forward or backward in addition to having the uh, handbrake on and the transmission in gear. Then once I have one side of the car up in the air, I go ahead and put one jack stand under the rear torsion bar cover, the little nub that sticks out of the end of the uh, torsion bar. There, now I've dropped it on top of the jack stand and I repeat the same process on the other side. You'll notice when I lift the opposite side, the car kind of tilts over diagonally. And then I go ahead and grab the jack stand from the rear, put it on the front opposite corner. So now I have two um, wheel chocks on the um, holding up both uh, front tires. Then I can go ahead and grab my other jack stand and put it underneath the other uh, torsion bar cover. Do a quick double check, make sure they're still in the same position. Lower it back down onto the other torsion bar cover. Give everything a quick shake. Everything seems to be okay. Double check my wheel chocks. I'm going to take one tire off only just the rear um, right side in order to get access to the starter right next to the transmission on that side of the car. Wheel and tire off under the car for extra safety. Assessing the situation to make sure I have enough clearance. Everything seems to look okay. Double check your wheel chocks. And we are good to go. Right in there. You could see it right above the CV joint, that black cylinder um, in front of the shock in this view. In case you want to know how high the, off the ground this is, it's not terribly high. But from this corner here, back corner of the fender to the ground, it's about 20-ish inches. If you want to know a little more about these stands, um, these are some 6-ton US Jack uh, uh, stands with a double pull mechanism. I bought these a little bit after the Harbor Freight jack stand recall back in, I think it was 2020. 
got rid of all my Harbor Freight stands and I went completely in the other direction and bought some, you know, these fairly expensive units. I think at the time they were about 150 bucks. I'm not sure what they go for now. Uh, but like I said before, they're US made. They're, um, you know, they're really sturdy, very heavy. Have, they have the double pull mechanism. Um, so they're much stronger than the old traditional single pull units that a lot of people have. Um, they, these six, ten, bleh, six ton units are also very wide and they're quite tall. Uh, that I can take these high enough to be able to allow me to do an engine drop with just these rather than my old setup which was you know my little three ton Harbor Freight units that I would use for typical service like this and then I had some bigger the, the big giant um, 12 ton Harbor Freight units to do engine drops and stuff uh, but up to you um, I highly recommend these units uh, they're they're super strong um, very high quality and uh, I hope that these are the last stands that I ever buy um, I'll put a link in the description in case you're interested in them otherwise let's get back to the starter remember to disconnect your negative battery terminal before you even touch anything on the starter because there are some cables that go to it that are live and uh, they'll give you a nasty surprise if you get anywhere near them with any uh, metal hand tools. So here we are under the car by the starter. And I'm just going to describe the components that I see here. That way uh, it helps guide you through how best to remove everything and hopefully helps you put everything back together. So we've got the starter here next to the gearbox. I'm laying underneath the car um, with my feet facing towards the back, obviously. And the starter, this is the starter motor right here next to the gearbox. It's got a little solenoid hanging here off of the side uh, facing the outside of the car next to the heater tube. And there are, and before I proceed any further, the battery cable is disconnected. So um, now it's safe to touch these wires without uh, any risk of electric shock. There's an inner and an outer post on the solenoid. The inner post has a kind of a large uh, wire connected uh, between the post and the motor. The outer post is connected to this big um, black cable and this big red cable up here by my finger. They're both connected to this post. There are a few spade connectors on here. Um, below the two posts, there is one spade connector here that is uh, horizontal, I guess. And uh, it's not connected to anything, at least on my car. And there is immediately above the two posts, there is a vertical one that is connected to a solid yellow wire. And there is another horizontal one right next to it here that is connected to this yellow wire with black stripes. I have a brand new harness. Um, I believe these are the factory uh, wire harness colors. Um, but um, yeah, just it's good to identify all these components before you start to disconnect anything. How to disconnect the starter from the uh, engine or the gearbox rather. So the starter is connected to the gearbox uh, on two studs coming out of the, uh, the gearbox. There's uh, one nut down here that is very easy to see and access. And there's another nut, um, a barrel nut that you remove with a hex key that is directly above um, the starter that you cannot see from here. And you can't access it from anywhere here. I'm going to have to remove the this heater tube, um, unscrew this clamp and take it out, see if I can maneuver myself in there and uh, get a, a clearer view of it because it's somewhere somewhere up here, but I don't have any hand clearance at the moment. So now I've disconnected the heater hose 
from the heat exchanger here and sort of shoved it to the side over here by the the axle and um, I took a towel and shoved it into this heat exchanger hole because if you're over here messing around with fasteners or sockets if you drop something in here you're gonna have a hard time fishing it out uh, so cover up this hole and now that the heated the heater tube is out of the way I can actually even though you can't see very well I can get in here and shove my hand and very barely feel where the the barrel nut is up here so I can either get in get it through here or from the back or front of the starter above the solenoid there's also access so I can I'm going to use both hands to um, figure out what kind of hex key I need to uh, remove the top nut I'm going to leave the bottom nut in place so that nothing falls on my head and concentrate on getting that top nut off. But before I do that, I'm going to disconnect all of the, the wiring to the solenoid so I have more clearance up here to, to shove my hands in here. So tools to remove the starter. If my understanding is correct, per the factory, the upper and lower nuts that hold the starter to the gearbox are supposed to be barrel nuts that use a hex key to uh, remove them. If that is the case, then you will need a 10 millimeter hex key such as this to remove the top and bottom. Um, you'll see in a little bit, but th this one is a little too short, so you might need a hex key with a piece of pipe to give you more leverage, especially to access the top a barrel nut. Um, if any of yours have been replaced by simple hex nuts, then a 15 millimeter will work. Uh, this is the case for me. I have a, a um, hex nut on the lower mounting point and a 15 millimeter socket or rat wrench fits under there and lets me crack it off. For the top, my top nut is still a barrel nut. However, um, I don't have a ton of leverage in there. So what I'm going to go with is a 10 millimeter hex socket. Uh, this one is a 3 8 drive connected to a one of these little shorty 3 8 extensions. It's about like two and a half inches or so. And um, a 3 8 to half inch drive adapter and a half inch drive ratchet because this is the longest lever arm that I have and I, I still can't get enough leverage to crack it open because I will be working in that space between the gearbox and the bottom of the chassis. Then I'll take my little pipe and get some extra leverage going in here. So you have options. If both of your barrel nuts have been replaced with hex um, nuts, then you would simply replace this with a 15 millimeter um, hex socket and you can use the same configuration for the top. To loosen the two nuts on the starter, you're going to have to essentially bear hug the gearbox. So if yours is super duper dirty, I'm really sorry. You're going to have to get really, really greasy. Uh, so make sure you're wearing uh, safety glasses so nothing falls in your eyes. And essentially, you're going to have to sit here with your feet facing towards the rear of the car. Your left hand is going to be on the starter side, either either over here in front of the the um, where the heater tube connection was, which is not my favorite because there isn't a ton of room here. Um, and your or over here on top of the starter, there's more clearance in here to... Um, get your hand in here and uh, hold the hex key or the uh, socket uh, down onto the barrel nut. And your right hand is going to have to come around on the other side of the gearbox, on the right side, or left side of the gearbox, rather, but with your right hand. Uh, and there are, there isn't a ton of clearance in here because there's a lot of um, stuff in the way. 
like the um, the handbrake uh, cable. There's a brake line up here. There's a throttle linkage that if you have huge arms, you may have to disconnect from the, uh, that end um, sits on top of the engine on the, uh, the bell crank. It has a little ball joint so you can pop it off. And then you can come over here and slide it out of here and get it out of the way so that you don't bend it and mess, mess with your throttle actuation. But I don't have very large arms, so I can actually fit my right arm in here and get to the the um, uh, where the ratchet will be over here, so I can so I can actually push up and uh, loosen the uh, the top nut on the starter. Okay, so I think we're ready for real time removal here, just so you can see the whole bear hug process of removing the gearbox. Remember, I've already disconnected the the cables and the wires off the end of the solenoid, so now this is just straight removing the top and bottom uh, nuts to get the starter off. Okay, here we go. So again, working from the left side of the car with my right hand. I can get to the top nut and with my left hand on the right side by the roughly at the end of the starter I can just hold the end of the ratchet so that it's I'm pressing on the end of the ratchet to keep the socket in place and can't tell but it's it's moving I can get a couple clicks of the ratchet Rusty barrel nut, ratchet, and sockets back down. And now, I believe it's only attached by the lower hex nut. So, got to be careful here because I don't want to drop the starter on my head. So, I'm going to loosen the lower nut. hold the starter yep now the starter is rocking back and forth so I'm going to hang out under the safety of the gearbox here and do the lower nut is really heavy <laughs> so now I am holding up the starter with my right hand on the right side of the car holding the starter up because now the top barrel nut is no longer there and I need to remove pressure off of it so I can remove the lower hex nut with my other hand. All right, now it's coming off. I'm dropping debris on my face. There we go. Now this starter is freed up, but it's still on the studs. Oh boy. Oh, heavy. That's heavy. I pulled it straight back to remove it off the studs. And, oh man, this thing is a beast. 
slow. Oh, I might have to get it off somehow. There we go. It's coming out kind of near, um, in between the axle and the parking brake cable. Oh, there we go. Oh man, this thing is massive. Oh, there we go. Now you can see, here's the lower stud where we removed the hex nut. The starter was here and up here is where that barrel nut was. And I was holding the ratchet that way above the gearbox. And uh, yeah, it's kind of cramped in here. Also, once you get it out, you could technically, so you shove my phone in here, don't get dizzy. There's a flywheel with, actually no, this is my clutch pressure plate. But here is the ring gear that is attached to, I think the flywheel. And this has the teeth that the starter engages with and cranks the engine over. You wanna make sure these teeth are in good shape and nothing's broken or rounded off. Uh, that would prevent the starter from engaging. You could, um, I guess you could technically turn the engine over a few degrees, maybe have someone else do it while you're looking at the teeth and just make sure that nothing is uh, messed up. But uh, uh, if you do find broken teeth or anything, any damage, then that that's an excuse to drop the engine and uh, replace that ring gear. So just a thought. This is heavy. So this is my stock starter. It's a Bosch unit, part number 00013121100. And I believe this is the original starter, uh, one and a half horsepower. Based on um, the marks on the screws here, I believe someone's been in here before me. So um, maybe it's just uh, overdue for a service. So what is typically happening is either not engage and spin up or after the car starts over, uh, after the engine starts, uh, the motor stays engaged and keeps spinning while the engine is on. So hopefully this requires just a simple cleanup. So let's uh, take it apart and see what we have going on in here. So we kick off this initial part of the teardown by removing the two small flathead screws holding the small cap at the end of the electric motor. Uh, you can see the cap with the two little ears on it. Remove the screws, pull off the cap. It might have some old grease on it. And then holding the shaft in place should be a small C-clip followed by a flat shim or washer. Remove both of those and then try to remove the two larger screws just outside of the cap, though it might be tough. These screws at the top of the, or back of the motor, opposite of the gear. Uh, if they're too tight and you can't break them loose, you might need one of these little impact driver things to get some extra torque on it. bolts now loosened, go ahead and take them off with a flathead screwdriver. They should be very long bolts with a washer. 
then you can, then you can proceed to uh, remove the small hex nut and bolt on the uh, aluminum casting side. That's the the bolt that is the pivot point for the lever. I think it's a 10 millimeter socket and a flathead screwdriver. We'll take both of those out. Now you can try to jiggle the components apart and the outer casing, the the armature or the field frame should come out. Then you can pull the armature out and if the solenoid gets stuck add some penetrating oil and get those two screws off. Again they're flathead screws, just two of them holding the uh, solenoid to the, the casting. And the the lever arm or the throwout fork should come off as well. There are two washers on the end of the armature. Next on the field frame, try to remove the the cap which holds the brushes on. Try to be very careful so you don't damage it. In my case I had to use penetrating oil to get it unstuck. That combined with some gentle tapping uh, with a rubber mallet eventually got it free. I think we're just going to clean this up and uh, lube it and uh, put it back together, see how it does. Yep. All right, cleaning time. Now to go ahead and clean everything up, all I used was some junk toothbrushes, carb cleaner, paper towels, and a ton of elbow grease. Fortunately on my starter it was relatively clean to begin with so there wasn't a lot of crud on there other than what was inside of the uh, motor assembly so essentially carbon buildup and a little bit of old grease on some of the moving parts. Um, if your engine was or is greasy oily then you might have a little bit of a tougher time cleaning the outer um, casing of the starter. I think I must have gone through maybe a can and a half of carb cleaner. And uh, everything seems to have cleaned up pretty nicely here. Die cast aluminum. And uh, I was very careful to, uh, to be gentle with anything that had wires on it just so that I wouldn't damage any wires and cause electrical issues. Um, so I was careful with the armature, the solenoid, and um, the, the casing with the brushes. And while I was using the carb cleaner, it looks like I took that uh, old black paint off. So I guess I'll need to repaint these two pieces. So the bronze bearings on the, on the casing this bore goes on this shaft and this little bore goes on this little shaft. The bronze bushings themselves don't have a lot of wear. When you mate them together, there isn't a lot of play if you wiggle them side to side. They're in great shape. So I'm going to 
leave them as is. Looking at the electrical components, um, well, actually back to the shafts. This shaft has a kind of a polished surface where the bearing was riding on, uh, on it, but um, uh, there's no, um, it's a nice clean surface. There's no uh, indentations or scratches of any kind on either end. Um, the, the brushes ride on this surface right here. And uh, same thing, there's kind of a, a polished area where the brushes would ride, but there's no indentation or grooving indicating extreme wear. Uh, it's, it's a pretty flat surface all the way around. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, say that this, this piece is in, in good shape. The brushes themselves are, as you can see, they are really long. They have a ton of meat on them. There is over half an inch of brush sticking out there. Um, they look aftermarket to me, like they've been replaced at some point. Let's see if we can see the logos on them. They have a, there, they have a, I don't know what brand that is, but they have a K on them. You could barely see right there. So someone's been in here at some point and replaced the brushes thankfully. And another thing to note is that the brushes are really long and there is a, they are equal length. And if you look at the spring here, there is a ton of travel in the spring uh, before it uh, no longer uh, is effective. So I know that this is dependent on the, the diameter of this part in here, but there is a ton of brush travel that can still happen. So I'm gonna say that these, these brushes are still in good shape and still usable. Lastly, this solenoid, um, I believe this is a replaceable component just by itself. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I believe this solenoid was previously sticking, um, as I had mentioned prior to that, but I think that was only due to uh, gunk. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to reuse it and hopefully uh, when it's all assembled back together, it still, it still functions. Um, this core part of the motor itself should still be okay. I've never had issues with the starter motor uh, failing to crank. It's always been issues with the solenoid engagement, either failing to engage or sticking and remaining engaged when it wasn't supposed to. So um, we're gonna give it a shot and see if this reassembled uh, still functions the way, the way it's supposed to. If it doesn't work, then at that point, we can decide whether we wanna try to replace just the solenoid or if we wanna go with a different starter altogether, but um, that's what this, is all about uh, seeing if we can make old parts new again. Um, I will, before I reassemble everything back together, I will have to repaint the motor housing and the solenoid housing because I stripped off the paint um, accidentally with um, uh, brake, you know, with the carb cleaner. So I'm gonna get that going right now. Oh, lastly, all the little bits over here, uh, internals and hardware, no issue with those. Those cleaned up just nicely and they don't have any, any um, they're all still usable again.